Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, we're going to compare the Shure SM7B dynamic microphone to the Rode NT1 condenser microphone. Now, at first glance, these microphones come from very different neighborhoods. We have dynamic versus condenser, built-in shock mounting versus external shock mounting, foam windscreen versus external pop filter. There's a whole bunch of differences, but there are some similarities with these microphones as well. And we're going to walk through all of those. And at the end, I'm going to give my opinion on which microphone is better for which application in your home studio. Now for the purposes of this video, we're using the SSL 2 Plus audio interface. If you see the meters come up on the screen, that's to indicate which microphone is active. So if you see the meter on the left hand side of the screen, you'll know that the Shure SM7B is the microphone that you're hearing. And if you see the, mic the meter come up on the right side of the screen, then you know that the Rode NT1 is the active microphone when you're listening. If you're looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in these videos, the microphones, the optional accessories, the stands, the interface, the headphones, anything like that, we do have links down in the description below with current up-to-date pricing and specs where you can buy these things from a variety of online retailers. So if you're looking to price shop or anything like that, we've made it as easy as possible by providing you with links that offer pricing to a variety of online retailers. Before we get into some of the more practical practical testing with these microphones, let's quickly go through the spec. The Shure SM7B is a dynamic XLR microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. It has an end or top address for the orientation of this microphone. It has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has an impedance of 150 ohms, and it has a sensitivity of minus 59 dB. It has a weight of 1.69 pounds or 766 grams. Now the Rode NT1 is a condenser XLR microphone. It has a cardioid polar pattern. It's a side address microphone. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has an impedance of 100 ohms. It has a sensitivity of minus 29 dB. It weighs 0.97 pounds and 440 grams. Next, let's talk about overall build quality and physical design of both of the microphones. The Shure SM7B has an all-metal rugged design. It has a yoke-based mounting system, an integrated mount into it, and built-in cable management. By design, dynamic microphones are a lot more rugged and durable just due to the components inside of them, so they do take a pretty good beating. I always recommend taking care of them as much as possible, but dynamic microphones are known to be quite rugged and durable. The Rode NT1 also has a metal build, but like I just said, a condenser microphone isn't quite as rugged or durable, so you do need to baby it a bit more, transporting it in a box or getting a custom Pelican case made for it or something like that. In terms of mounting this microphone, you do have a couple different options. In this video, I'm using the SMR mount, which I think looks a lot more elegant for video if you're going to use this pop filter over this one. This is the SM6 shock mount that Rode makes for this microphone as as well. As you can see here, the microphone just screws into the bottom of either one of these shock mounting systems and you can use the integrated pop filter or you can take the pop filter off on either one. Now speaking of pop filters, the Shure SM7B, this is the one that most people use. They just like the low profile design of it. but. Sure does recommend this larger pop filter if you are doing voiceover applications. It's really up to you and personal preference. I have a tendency to use the bigger one more often than not, but every once in a while I do switch it up just to experiment and try new things. Now the Shure SM7B does have some additional built-in functionality as well. On the back of the microphone, there are two switches. One switch will turn on a built-in high pass filter, and the second switch will turn on a built-in presence boost for more vocal clarity. Now as a general rule, I always avoid using those switches. I either prefer to do all my editing and post or use an audio mixer. Rarely do I count on changes that have been made on the back of a microphone. I just find it much more simple to always count on those switches being neutral so you can get a neutral recording out of your microphone. Now if you're using either one of these microphones for broadcast, podcasting, anything like that, voiceover applications, we're just going to do a couple background noise tests here so you can see what the off-axis rejection is like. So this is what the Shure SM7B sounds like if you're typing on what I would describe as an average laptop keyboard. And this is what the Rode NT1 sounds like if you're typing on an average keyboard. 
If you're working at your desk, this is what the Shure SM7B sounds like if you're clicking a pen near the microphone. And this is what the Rode NT1 sounds like if you're clicking a microphone on your desk while you're working on your podcast or recording. If you're shuffling paper or plastic, this is what it sounds like with the Shure SM7B. If you're shuffling paper or plastic, this is what it sounds like with the Rode NT1. This is what the Shure SM7B sounds like when you're about a fist away. And now this is what the Shure SM7B sounds like when you get right up close to it. See if you can notice any proximity effect with this microphone. And this is what the Rode NT1 sounds like when I'm about a fist away from the windscreen, so about six inches away from the microphone. And this is what the Rode NT1 sounds like when I get really close to the windscreen. See if you can notice any type of proximity effect with this microphone. Now in terms of the frequency response on these microphones, the Shure SM7B starts rolling in at about 50 hertz. It doesn't make it all the way up to zero until it comes close to 700 or 800 hertz there. That's when it really comes down to zero. It has a pretty flat midsection and then after about 4k it gets pretty jagged and then falls off at 12k. Now the Rode NT1 is basically ruler flat the whole way. It does have a small built-in high pass filter kind of if you can call it that and then it does have a bump of the upper frequencies which provides a bit more clarity. So which microphone do I recommend for which applications? Which one's better for you? At first, I'm going to come at this from a voiceover or voice recording application. That seems to be the most commonly requested thing that people are trying to sort out. Which microphone is better for recording my voice? I would say my recommendation on this microphone depends highly on your space. I happen to record in a pretty noisy environment, so I'm a lot more partial to the Shure SM7B. The Shure SM7B is warm and flat. It's a little bit dull at the top, so it does get accused of being dark, but that really works for me the majority of the time because that those characteristics also knock out a whole bunch of the ambient noise that's around where I record most of the time. Without this built-in EQ. When I use something like the Rode NT1, which is a lot more flat with that upper boost, I do hear a lot more background noise. I hear cars driving by, dog, dogs barking, plane noise. It's a lot more sensitive. So to recommend the Rode NT1 over the Shure SM7B, you would have to have a room that's both very well soundproofed and sound treated. Those are both different things. Our studio happens to be very well with the sound treatment, but it doesn't have very good soundproofing. You do need both of those, I think, in order to recommend the Rode NT1 over the Shure SM7B. With the Shure SM7B, you can fake it and you don't need a completely soundproof environment, which let's be honest, lot, not a lot of people have. That being said, both of these microphones are used for a variety of applications around the studio. So if you're doing something that's not voice recording, you may be better off with the Rode NT1. The Rode NT1 is much more known as an all-rounder microphone. It's way more flexible for recording a pile of different sources from sensitive instruments to guitar amps to things like that. It's not the best maybe for a kick drum where the Shure SM7B would do a better job, but overall, in the studio you could use it as overheads you could use it on toms you could use it on whatever you wanted uh, mo much more so than the Shure SM7B so even though the Rode NT1 is a lot more flat a lot of people prefer the sound of it I happen to prefer it on the sound of my voice for recording my voice with the caveat that I will only use it if it's not noisy outside or I know I'm in a dead quiet environment so that means if I was to only choose one of these since the majority of what I do is talking head video like the one you're watching right now if I had to choose one the SM7B is a no-brainer because it means that I can film and record much more often than with the Rode NT1 just because of ambient noise issues. So that's how I'd recommend these microphones. The Rode NT1 is better, crisper. I like the sound of it a lot more, but it's a lot more sensitive to the environment, but it's also way more flexible in your studio in terms of what it can record on a variety of instruments. The Shure SM7B here is all faithful. It's designed for vocal recording. It does work for other applications in the studio, but if you're looking for a podcasting mic that you can count on to constantly record in noisy environments, then this is a better choice for you. If you have any questions about anything that I've said in this video, 
please leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you do want to see pricing or specs, again, for anything that you see in this video, we have a ton of links down below. So please check those out. I hope that they're as helpful as they can be with helping you find more information. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, we do record a ton of these videos almost on a daily basis. So please like and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.